All right, to uh, give you a quick rundown of what I mean by Dynamesh and Sculptress are simply these tools right here. This is called Sculptress. Now what this does is say I need more levels of polygons in certain specific zones of my model and I don't want to have to subdivide it and suddenly have my number of uh, polys increase to a larger amount than already necessary. Like this character, well, it doesn't need to be 29 million polygons because I know it's a little excessive. What I have going for it is that since I since I remodeled it in a lower poly from the base and I'm not using Dynamesh, what the program does itself is that it takes this normal, uh, it takes your first preview and so the higher you go in subdividing it, while it takes a little bit longer for it to load, if you were to do this with Dynamesh, it wouldn't jump back to your original lower sculpt, thus slowing down your process of your computer and the program itself. So by turning it, it would take longer, it would lag and stutter. You don't want that. But let's just say, for example, that I, I need to create the base of my model. Like I wanna, I wanna form the model. And let's just get rid of my hires. So right now I'm at 116,000 um, active points. Now if I go to this, notice that my grid is all squares. And it's, it's clean, right? Well, what Dynamesh does for you, if you need to create a base of your character, is by clicking on it. Notice how it kind of like goes all over the place. There's triangles now, there's squares, there's all this different deformation of the, um, of your polys. Well, the cool thing about it is that it makes it easier for you to, let's just say I want to add a horn to my character, right? Notice how it's not being clean and it's coming out like this. Well, if I come to the side out here and I press control and I swipe down, it adds more polys for me to go through in Dynamesh and it pretty much captures the, uh, it captures the shape of what you're trying to do for your character. But once you have this done, lo and behold, you have this magical tool called Z Remesher. And let's just say I want this to be roughly about maybe, I want to say 30,000 polygons. So I have it at 18. And now we're loading it up. It's calculated what I need to do. Might take a little while. Boom. It gave me pretty pretty clean topology. It's not great for uh, animation at its current stage. The eyes are pretty okay except for this part right here to where the polys are forming and it's coming out of the circle instead of just being its own. But if you want to just redo stuff like that and you want to remap it, you can just come down here to zero metric guidance and you can just draw some guidelines on where you want certain circles to be so if I do this I come out here pretty much you're building a mask for your character so we're going to every little whole area that we need for circular kind of a uh, mapping come out here just connect that over here make one more bigger mask like a raccoon mask just picture a raccoon when you do this now they have a little bandit mask do you want cleaner like a mouth right here because for the longest time I was using Dynamesh for pretty much getting high polys and getting all this level of detail when in reality, that's not what you want to do with Z. Uh, that's not what you want to do with Dynamesh. Sorry, what you want to do with Dynamesh is you want to get the base construct of your character. From there, you just click on this. The guidelines will come in there. Calculate what you want. Kind of get an idea of what you want done for your character and the topology of trying. It's trying to guess what you want and calculate mathematically. I don't know what's going on behind the scenes, but all I know is that it helps it. So notice the topology is a lot better. We still have this eye problem here, but it's not as bad as it was the first time without the uh, the guidelines. But from here, notice that 
it doesn't look great. There's no, there's no real like, there's no detailing. But now that we have a lower base right here, we can go and click this. We can subdivide it. And as it gets to 2 million, notice how my computer doesn't go crazy. Computer doesn't go crazy. But if I did this in Dynamesh, as we'll go back here, if I go up here, let's just say 2 million right here. It's not bad. It's still working. It's still jumping to the lower one as a preview, but the preview one's still pretty high. Let's jump up a little bit more. It's getting a little bit heavier to move. Let's go one more. So let's say let's say I draw something on this. Notice how long it took for me, how it stuttered, and how it's stuttering when I go undo. All right, here we go. Me drawing. It takes a little bit. It'll work eventually, but it's not great. Now I'm gonna press the undo right now. Notice how long that took? Not good. Granted, it's 47 million polygons, so your computer is working overtime. But if we go back to how we did it before, click Z remesher, calculate it, do that little doo 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 doo. Come on, baby, get up there. All right, we got the lower. Let's get that up there to a large number. Let's go like 8 million. If I draw on it, look how fast it does. It's instantaneously. Like it'll, sometimes you're undo. It, the higher you go, regardless of what you do, it's always going to maybe, it's going to, it's going to stutter. But the thing is, when you have a lower thing that's jumping down to 33,000 as your preview, it has an easier base to work with. So if I draw now, it doesn't take as long undo button right now. It might take just as long as the other one, but now you can have relative detail that you might want to put in here. So let's say I wanted to put some, uh, let's put some fur on this guy. Look at that. Got some fur on him. Just up that a little bit so that way you can be more clear. Look at the detail in that. And notice your grid is cleaner. Unlike Dynamesh, there's not a lot of, like, a triangles. Now, I also talked about Sculptress. What Sculptress does is this. So if I click on Sculptress, and I'm pretty sure it's it's more of... Yeah, it, it'll only work if I have one, uh, one guy. So let's just get rid of my high polys right now. Let's stay at 8 million. Now, with Sculptress, if you needed more detail, what this does is say we just want more fur on this guy right but we're not going to make it clean we're just going to make it look nasty it's not going to be great but we want more we want more fur on this guy so we click on sculptress and what this does is oh <laughs> i messed it up already i'm sorry okay let's go to two million so for sculptress now come on you gotta work for me today okay you are so now if i click on this Come on, you little bugger. All right, there we go. Now it's working. Now, if I needed more polys in certain areas and I wanted more level of detail, what this does is it creates more triangles, kind of like how Dynamesh does it. But now I can just keep this in restricted zones of my mesh. That way it won't affect the entire mesh itself and just increase the number. Granted, it's going to increase over time the more you start using this, but what it tries to do is it tries to keep it all in one place. And this is the advantage of what ZBrush has when it comes down to sculpting. But I do still think you should use other programs. Don't get stuck in just one program. Because if you're able to actually work with different pipelines and how you can transfer from ZBrush to Blender or ZBrush to... Maya or whatever what what whatever preferred program that you have it's always best to do this so that way your workflow can be quick it can be faster you can save loads of time on character development or just scenes in general but yeah i i i still think right now as it is zbrush is the best sculpting um the best sculpting tool that you can find out there right now while it does have a pricey price tag on it 
it's it's still it's still better than a lot out there and even though blender is growing really really quickly the tools for sculpting in that well you can still get the same stuff that you're getting with mine right now because i'll be honest i'm not the i'm not the greatest sculptor i i do tuning stuff for a reason but the time it would take for you in blender you can kind of half that in zbrush really really quickly so I hopefully hopefully this helped hopefully this opened your eyes to maybe checking this program out giving it a free trial and trying to look up some tutorials on how you can pipeline it from zbrush to blender or blender to zbrush and then because mine is mine is zbrush to blender then from blender to substance painter and then from substance painter and baking the maps and that back to blender or back to um marmoset toolbag yeah Thanks for watching.